we are trying to understand production and cost in the long run. In the previous video, what you watched is production function in the long run. And as a specific example, I introduced you to the Cobb Douglas production function. And let us look at the production function once again, where quantity of output is a function of capital and labor. Now in the long run, all these things can vary. So labor, capital, and quantity of output, all of them can change. Now we have been drawing diagrams where we can only represent two variables at a time. But here we are in a situation where we have three variables. So how do we get rid of this problem or how do we resolve this problem and show this relationship on a two-dimensional diagram? What we'll do is we'll look at different combinations of capital and labor which produce the same level of output. And, and let us see what we learn from doing this. So, so what we need is a concept called isoquant. And isoquant can be broken down into two parts. Iso means equal, and quant is a short form for quantity of output. So what we are looking at is equal or fixed quantity of output. And an isoquant, this is the definition of an isoquant. Isoquant is a collection of points representing different combinations of capital and labor that produce or yield the same level of output. Now this is based on the assumption that there are different technologies available to produce a given level of output. And so, and different technologies means you can use larger amount of capital relative to labor or relatively larger amount of labor relative to capital and produce the same level of output. Or there are a variety of technologies available to us to produce a given level of output. Now, isoquants are very similar in terms of analysis, like the indifference curves we studied on the consumer side. And since we have already looked at indifference curve theory, this is using the same kind or similar kind of things on the production side. And so what we have on the vertical axis is units of capital, K, and on the horizontal what we have x is what we have is units of labor l and suppose we are looking at different technologies which can produce say 100 units of output you could use more capital less labor or more labor and less capital and there are varieties of combinations of capital and labor you can use to produce 100 units of output suppose this is possible so this curve that you get this curve that you get is called the isoquant, isoquant curve, or simply an isoquant. And what does this represent? Different combinations of capital and labor which give you or produce the same level of output. Look at this point A. Here we are using relatively more capital and less labor relative to B, where we use less capital and more labor. So when you use more capital relative to labor, we can call this capital intensive technology. Intensive technology. And here, when we use relatively more labor relative to capital, we can call this labor intensive technology. Now, look at the following. In an overpopulated country like India or China, 
what we are likely to use more is labor intensive technology why because we have more workers relative to machines and in the in countries like the us or uk we are likely to use capital intensive technology why because workers are scarce relative to machines and so what this isoquant does is just tells us what different combinations of labor and capital will produce the same level of output and in this case it is 100 now let us look at this diagram once again we have units of labor on the horizontal axis units of capital on the vertical axis and this red iso isoquant is defined at 100 units of output now one point on this isoquant is if you use 100 units of labor and 100 units of capital what you produce is 100 units of output now we have another isoquant this green one this green one and a point on this isoquant the green one is 150 units of workers and 150 units of capital or in other words what we have done is we have increased number of workers by 50 percent and capital by 50 percent as well all our inputs have increased equi proportionately now suppose the output represented by the green isoquant is 150 and let me just move it around here and what we find is <clears throat> when you increase all inputs by 50 percent output increases by how much by increases by 50 percent and so this must be representing a case of what it will be constant returns to scale constant returns to scale and let me just bring this here constant returns to scale <clears throat> now suppose in place of 150 suppose this isoquant the green one represented an output of say 200 200 now when you increase all inputs by 50 percent output doubles and so this must be a situation of increasing returns to scale or what we have called irs in short <clears throat> another possibility is this isoquant may represent an output of say 125 and so when you increase all inputs by 50 percent what happens to output it increases only by 25 percent so this must be a case of decreasing returns to scale or drs in short so the point here is in from this diagram on isoquants we should be able to figure out whether the firm is experiencing constant returns to scale constant returns to scale or increasing returns to scale and or decreasing returns to scale now let us quickly look at the properties of isoquants and these properties are very similar to what we encountered when we looked at consumer theory namely through indifference curves the first property is isoquants are downward sloping and if you want to produce the same level of output and you decide to increase number of workers the only way you can produce the same amount of output is if you reduce number of machines when you increase number of workers the second property of isoquants is an isoquant further away from the origin implies higher level of output and the opposite is also true and that is an isoquant closer to the origin implies lower levels of output 
the third property of isoquants is two isoquants cannot intersect and the fourth property of an isoquant is an isoquant is convex to the origin and so these are the four properties and we'll not spend any time proving this because the proofs are very similar to what you encountered when you studied consumer theory now let us examine the fourth property in greater detail and that is an isoquant is convex to the origin and this is what convexity would mean and and what convexity means something you are aware of as we move down the curve the curve becomes flatter and flatter or in other words the absolute value of slope declines as we use more and more workers so as you move from a point like a to a point like b the curve has become flatter and flatter or in other words the absolute value of slope has declined as we move along an isoquant now slope of an isoquant is called the marginal rate of technical substitution between labor and capital and since we'll use it again and again we can abbreviate this as mrt slk and what this means is the following remember you are staying on the same indifference curve and what you're doing is suppose you increase number of workers when you do that you want to reduce capital and reduce it by that amount so that the firm continues to produce the same level so a definition of MRTS will be how much capital must be reduced when the firm decides to increase labor by one unit and also maintain the same level of output. Now we have capital on the vertical axis, labor on the horizontal axis, so the slope of an ISO account will be change in capital divided by change in labor and that is what we call MRTSLK. Now we want MRT SLK to decline in an absolute sense as we increase number of workers. To understand this, let us do some mathematical manipulation. So MRT SLK is change in capital divided by change in labor. Let us multiply and divide this expression by change in output. And this is what we have done here. And let us now rearrange the terms. So what I've done is I brought change in Q divided by change in L, put it under one parenthesis, and change in K divided by change in L in another parenthesis. <clears throat> now, what is change in Q divided by change in L? You might remember this from an earlier discussion. This must be marginal product of labor, this part. So it will be MPL. And what is this change in K divided by change in Q, not L? Sorry about that. And this will be 1 divided by MPK. Or in other words, marginal rate of technical substitution between labor and capital is just a ratio of marginal product of labor and marginal product of capital. So here we have this ratio, MRT SLK is a ratio of MPL by MPK. Now if you want MRTS to decline as we increase number of workers and reduce capital, the way it will decline is when MPL falls and MPK increases. That's how this ratio will fall. And so when you increase number of workers, you want MPL to fall. And this will happen because of law of diminishing marginal product of labor. And as you reduce capital, MPK must increase. And this will happen because of law of diminishing marginal product of capital. So this explains as to why an isoquant should be convex to the origin.